down in Medford, there was a comic shop. And I, what the heck, I haven't been in one of those in years. So I walked in there and I, it just, it was like an epiphany, it hit me. This is what I wanna do. I can do this, I can be happy doing this. I don't have to be a millionaire, I don't have to make a lot of money, but you know, as long as I pay the bills and make a difference in the community, I can do this. I do costuming and stuff. When I met the, the 501st Star Wars costumers and found out they do a lot of charity work, because I'm a Freemason, so I, I'm, I like to do charity, make a difference, you know, in the community. This is Batman coming to you live from the Portland Comic Book Show. Well, back in the early 70s, the shows were produced by a fan club called the Portland Alliance of Fans. And then neither group was putting on shows. And so I thought, well, if nobody else wants to put on a show, I'll try putting on a show. Pretty soon I had flyers out. I had booked a hall, put some money down, and I was out there promoting uh, the Portland Comic Book Show. Pretty soon I had a date for my next show, and it's just been continuous ever since. I worked, helped start Dark Horse, worked for Dark Horse a lot, worked for Marvel for 15 years, probably did about 3,500 pages of comic books, and now I just do it occasionally. I teach mostly. Yeah, and you're always working on, you know, issue number one is coming out, and you're starting issue number four. so they don't release anything until you've completed three issues in the can. Comic book shows, you know, I like meeting kids and fans and parents and, you know, signing books is great and, you know, selling artwork is great too. Uh, it's just a way to connect. You know, I really liked Spider-Man when I was a kid, so it was a favorite. You know, I, I came to comics uh, late in life. Like, I didn't read comics when I was a kid, like I think most people in comics did. Uh, when I was, a, like, 17 years old, I, I had a part-time job, and one of my co-workers was moving out of state and needed money, and so he sold me his entire comics collection for $50. And uh, thankfully, he had really good taste, because I feel like I, I just kind of developed his taste in comics. But then one day I'm walking past the editor's office and he yells out, when are you going to write that comic for me? And so that's how I got my first uh, gig writing comics. I'm, I'm only the writing. No one would want to look at a comic book that I had drawn. Yeah. yeah. My name is Paul Guinan. I created this character called Boilerplate, which is a robot who uh, had adventures about 100 years ago with people like Teddy Roosevelt and Lawrence of Arabia and whatnot. Eventually, that attention turned into a book deal. And in 2007, I began work on this project in earnest. And my wife, who's a wordsmith, helped me uh, write the stories. She, I would describe her as giving the robot heart. And once the book came out, it was shown around to some people in Hollywood. J.J. Abrams saw it, loved it, contacted us, and now we have this movie deal. Spider-Man's always been one of my favorite characters. The Spider-Man books? I really liked Spider-Man when I was a kid. I am a big Superman fan. 